Foreshadowing your character's backstory isn't something every group has to deal with. A lot of groups come together at Session Zero and make their backstories together, and I totally understand that. But recently it's become a trend of people really liking to have their hidden backstory because it creates character engagement if you do it properly. But the problem is, a lot of people will try to force their backstory into things and it doesn't come off the way they want, it doesn't come off as mysterious or intriguing as they desire, and ultimately it just ends up falling flat and something people don't care about. But I do have a very specific case study that will be able to help with this, and I think it is one of the best ones out there. So, assuming you read the title of the video, you know what I'm talking about. Let's jump into it. Now, like I said, it's in the title, so this shouldn't be anything surprising, but for all of you who have not watched Campaign 2 of Critical Role and don't want spoilers, not the video for you. Time to click off now before, well, you get spoiled. But for those of you who know what you're in for, let's jump into it. Not the Brave was Sam Regal's character in Campaign 2 of Critical Role and had one of the most masterful slow burn reveals of a backstory I've ever seen. And I think there's a very specific reason of why. Sam did not force anything. He let the entire backstory develop organically and be revealed over the course of the campaign. But not only that, he also developed the backstory in real time. He didn't have all the details figured out. And I legitimately think that is one of the best things you can do to properly foreshadow things. So we're gonna give some examples here. I'm gonna jump right into it and describe Not really briefly. Not the Brave was a tiny goblin who seemed very skittish and well, alcoholic. She seemed to be afraid of a lot of things and her name, Not the Brave, was obviously a play on words to describe exactly who she was. And over the course of the campaign, she had to discover who she truly was, become acceptant of who she actually was, and grow into that. But there was just strange inconsistencies in her backstory from the get-go that caused everybody to keep eyes on her. But Sam was very clear to make sure that he never forced a single thing when revealing her backstory. One of the first things that was revealed is that Not was afraid of water. If we go under with the water, we should. Under the water? Oh yeah, this is an amphibious assault. <laughs> <laughs> How many V's are in that word? What did you say? Like five. I, There's a I sea in the middle of the world. I don't do well with water. I, 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 I don't think oh. I can go down there. Why yeah. don't I? I'll stay watch. I'll stay watch. Why, why are you good in water? I just don't. I don't like water. You can hold your breath, right? Probably. And Sam actually did not plan this. It was just something that he decided to do because he thought it was funny. But he then decided to add that into his backstory and develop it further, leading to some of the most organic foreshadowing of a backstory possible. What happened was he decided that early on in her life, she had been drowned and she had actually died and come back to life at a later date, leaving her terrified of water. This leads to some of the greatest foreshadowing possible because Sam revealed it in a joke. It was supposed to be a joke that she was afraid of water, but we now truly believe that she was. So I told them to run, run to the river, and I, I broke off, and I ran a different way, and the goblins followed me. They surrounded me, and I, I fought. I, they brought me to this river. and they drowned me in it. I can still feel the water in my lungs, in my ears, in my, my nose, and then nothing. And later down the line, we realized why it was important. For any writers or anybody out there who likes creating stories, please keep this in mind. If you want to foreshadow something, hide it in a joke. It leaves a reason for it to be in the narrative, but also doesn't just highlight it so that everybody looks at it and knows it's going to be important later on. It can create some of the most fascinating plot twists. But regardless, back to Nas. Now, am I saying that the way to properly foreshadow your backstory is to improv it? No, but I do think that you can leave a little bit of flexibility with it. Sometimes you just gotta make a decision that makes sense in your gut and then decide if it's gonna make sense for the character later on. And I think that is a fantastic way of foreshadowing things because it's never forced. You simply did something because it felt right for the character and now you figure out what it means later on. I myself have done this. But Sam doesn't just improv his backstory, though he admittedly has done quite a bit of it. Some of the other things that he does is he goes forward and makes actions with the character that he doesn't explain and makes it clear that the character doesn't want to explain it. And it makes sense. Early on in the campaign, they go into a village that she used to live in. And as they move forward, she takes the form using a disguised self to take the form of a halfling. And we just assume that this is just her typical disguise. She's done it before. I'm, my name's not the brave and I am the little goblin girl. Okay. But, 
Once upon a time, I was Beth, a young halfling woman. But she then goes to one of the doors of the houses, knocks on it, and demands to see her son. This is the first time we've ever heard anything like this. And the strange thing is, the person who answered the door seems to recognize her. This is the first time we know anything about this, and it is perfectly organic. They came to this town, they found it destroyed, she wanted to check in on what we now know is her son, but this is the first time where we get sort of any implication that not may not have always been a goblin. It's the first time we experienced that and it happened truly organically. One of the most important things you can learn from this is let these things be revealed organically, but you have to work with your DM on it. If you just want things to be revealed as it happens in the story, you have to talk with the DM and make sure that it will come up in the story. Otherwise, it never happens at all. And then, well, what do you do? But the other side of the coin is, if your DM presents something from your backstory, don't be cagey about it. Nothing is worse than just intentionally trying to hide it because the rest of the group isn't going to know what's going on. If you've been presented a chance to reveal something from your backstory, then do it. Jump into to it and react as your character would. There's no reason to be incredibly cagey unless that's part of a backstory, in which case play that up too. Make it clear there's an absolute reason why you are refusing to give any information about this. And that will also catch the eyes of the party. But this is just one of many things that Sam does over the course of the campaign. Once the party has discovered that not actually used to be a halfling, she begins to open up a little bit more over time when she feels that she is safe to do so. And that makes perfect sense. And eventually she is even able to return to her halfling form. And there's a huge part of the campaign and one of the best moments in the entire campaign that is focused solely on trying to allow her to return back to her halfling form. That was sprinkled with the dust of deliciousness. But that all happened because Sam didn't push it. Sam let it slowly develop over time by finding times where it made sense to reveal it and also letting the DM drag it into the spotlight when it made sense and was necessary. But it's really important to note that he never tried to put it in front of everybody. He just looked for times where it made sense too. And that's the main thing. If you're looking for times where it makes sense to reveal these things just by simple statements or actions, that is how you're going to get the attention of the rest of the party. An action will speak volumes if it tends to not make sense without the context of your backstory. If you are a character who is constantly brave and fierce and you see something and run from it, that action speaks clearly to everybody without the context of your backstory that something is going on and wrong. You acted out of character and now they'll be curious. And that's how you foreshadow things. You find times where it makes sense to reveal it and where it will make sense that it is noticed. Just don't try and force it into everybody's faces because it's really just not gonna go that well. So ultimately, what is it that we've learned from Sam and not and well, Veth, We've learned that the most important thing is to not present things in a forceful way, but let it make sense in the story. And if it isn't going to make sense in the story, work with your DM, talk with them, discover how to make that happen. But foreshadowing really just comes down to you paying attention to what's going on and reacting in a realistic way and making sure to find the times where when you react, without the context of your backstory, it just throws up giant red flags because that's what's going to get people to notice. So try and do all that. Try and embrace the backstory and just have a game. Just have a game and have a great game. This video wouldn't be possible without the incredible, beautiful bastards over on our Patreon. I'd like to give an additional, very personal thank you to the Divine Bastards Big D the Cool Guy, BKBW, Clark Smith, Diet Blue, Duplicolor, Manifestering, Rocky, Sassy Cat Productions, Sorit, Supreme Court, Talia Martin, Tin Eye, Void Mystic, Volpe Nico, and Zombies for People Too. We wouldn't be able to do what we do without you guys, and you mean the absolute world to us. Keep being beautiful, keep being amazing, and as always, make the world your own.